क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू फॉर्मुलेट द आउटपुट पावर एंड फॉर द बीम लोडिंग कंडीशन इन टू कैविटिक लिस्ट्रॉन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज द वेरी पॉपुलर माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब टू वर्क एज एम्पलीफायर टू कैविटिक लिस्ट्रॉन वी हैव सीन द वर्किंग प्रोसीजर डिपेंड्स ऑन टू द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ वेलासिटी मॉड्यूलेशन दैट वी हैव वेरीफाइड एंड द डेरीवेशन फॉर द कंसर्न वी हैव टेकन अलॉन्ग विद द बंचिंग प्रोसेस नाउ लेट एस कंटिन्यू so for the working procedure of the two cavity cliston we have taken the help of the apple gate diagram to show you the bunching and the structural diagram that we can get back to so this is the structural diagram of the two cavity cliston as amplifier up till now we have seen the velocity modulation so velocity modulation has to be occurred at the gap spacing between the grids of the buncher cavity the same derivation we have covered the bunching process in between the drift space that we have covered into the previous video now the electron bunch has reached to the gap spacing between the grids of the catcher cavity now what should be the phase of the catcher cavity so that there will be the efficient amplification with the help of this device the answer is the phase of the catcher cavity should be in the retarding phase so at the time of retarding phase of the catcher cavity there will be the conversion of kinetic energy of the electron bunch to the potential energy given to the grids of catcher cavity so that the output can be taken with amplification the electrons that have given the complete energy the conversion from kinetic energy to the potential energy of the grids here will be left with energy deficiency and finally be collected by this electrode at positive potential named as collector here so in the earlier video we have been derived the equation of catcher cavity current denoted by i2 here so that equation we carry forward here so now the induced current into the catcher cavity because the electron bunch has given to the grids that equation we can write so here we write i suffix here we mention i2 for induced we write i and d into the suffix so this is supposed to be equal to beta suffix 0 in multiplication to i2 up till now in the earlier derivations we would be using beta suffix i i mentioned that beta is the beam coupling coefficient so as it was with respect to the buncher cavity that is the input cavity the suffix we had given beta suffix i here now catcher cavity is the output cavity from which the amplified microwave can be taken as output hence beta suffix o here we mention here now as both the buncher cavity and the catcher cavity are identical into the structure the beam coupling coefficient in ideal case is same hence most of the times for the two cavity crystals unless it is specified we shall be taking beta suffix i is equal to beta suffix o now here as we have the equation for i2 the rhs of this equation will be equal to so i write here beta o or beta 0 i can call as it is into twice into i0 in multiplication to the bessel's function for the first order it will be j1 of in the bracket n into x will be capital x only the bunching parameter in multiplication to the cosine in the bracket here we have omega of t2 minus tau minus capital t0 so this is from the earlier video here so now i2 induced here or simply the capital i induced finally we can write the fundamental component from the catcher cavity will be equal to beta 0 into simply i2 therefore it will be equal to beta 0 twice capital i0 j1 of capital x 
so this formula will also be helpful to solve the problems based on the two cavity cholesterol working as amplifier now here as we are taking the output current from the catcher cavity the output equivalent circuit can be given in the form of following diagram that we can write here so here we have the three resistances denoted here so it will be very first of all i mention here r sho then it will be the next component we shall be discussing r suffix b finally capital r suffix l and equivalent to here we shall be representing r sh here now for catcher cavity as we have denoted the current by i2 here the voltage can be denoted as v2 so the applied potential here across the resistances that we have shown it will be v2 the flow of current along with consideration of beam coupling coefficient we can give at this particular branch so it will be beta sub is 0 into i2 here also i can mention beta sub is 0 into i2 in this particular direction for rsh now here the four types of resistance symbols i have mentioned here into the equivalent circuitry the rsh o the rsh shows us the wall resistance of the catcher cavity so this is with respect to the walls of the catcher cavity r suffix b is with respect to the beam loading and rl is the external loading of the circuitry and in equivalent rsh denotes the effective shunt resistance so the equivalent circuitry with respect to the output current from the catcher cavity for this portion we have represented now now we shall be having a formulation of the output power to our topic so therefore output power will be having a relation with respect to the beam coupling coefficient of output cavity and the current denoted by i2 so it will be given by p output out representing here in terms of beta suffix o into i2 here that is squared divided by 2 and this is in multiplication to the effective shunt resistance given by r suffix sh here so simply we can write it as beta suffix o i2 into v2 divided by 2 here so this formula for the output power is very very important so this will be helpful into the numericals along with the calculation of the output power for the device if we have a relation to the input power we shall be able to express in terms of efficiency of the device so as we have written here p out output power the input power can be a simply multiplication of the v0 into i0 i0 is the beam current v0 is the dc potential applied between cathode and collector here the ratio of the two can give us the efficiency given as the efficiency can be denoted by eta so it is the ratio of p out divided by p in here therefore from the above equation we write here beta 0 into i2 v2 divided by 2 as it is and in place of p in we put i0 v0 so this simple formulation will definitely help you calculate the efficiency of the two cavity cholesterol provided you have the values of i0 v0 the input current and potential and the output current and potential i2 v2 along with the beam coupling coefficient so as we have gone through the introduction with the help of the effective shunt resistances the output power the input power and the efficiency many of the times the two cavity cholesterol is also having numericals based on to the mutual conductance here 
So with respect to the conductance, we have the formula. The mutual conductance of the klystron amplifier can be denoted by G sub x m into the mod we can take and here it will be the ratio of induced current into the catcher cavity that is I2 or induced we write the suffix to the input maximum voltage to the first cavity. So as the conductance is mutual it is between the two cavities so the current of the output cavity and the maximum voltage from the input cavity it is the ratio and further we can have the representation of this equation as twice capital B0 into I0 J1 of capital X divided by capital V1. So this formula also is helpful. I outline this particular formula. The voltage gain of the klystron amplifier in terms of the shunt resistance and the mutual conductance can be given by the formula. Here the voltage gain can be represented by A sub x V and it is the simply multiplication of G sub x M into R sub x SH here. So this way you should be able to calculate the gain for the two cavity klystron device. So as up till now for the two cavity klystron device, we have been using the input parameters in terms of the beam current I0 and the potential applied to the electrodes V0. The power for the same if it is represented in terms of the conductance here. Here we can have the formula capital P0. So this will be equal to V0 square into G0. So this formula is also outlined here provided G0 is actually the ratio of V0. It should be in the denominator. So I0 divided by V0. Finally, the power delivered by the cavity or the bunching purpose can be given by the formula. Here we write capital P sub x B. So it is power given by the buncher cavity. Hence, it will be dependent on the maximum RF voltage. It will be squared divided by 2 and in multiplication to G sub x B here. So this is with respect to the bunching the conductance here. So I hope this formula will definitely benefit you for solving the problems based on to the two cavity cluster. By the next lecture based on to the understanding of two cavity cluster amplifier working and all the formulae derived for measurement of various parameters and its efficiency we shall be having a practice of problem one two cavity cluster. I hope you are definitely getting the knowledge of microwave engineering. For more information like this, you can subscribe to Ikeda channel. Thank you.